Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships with your host Michian. They will be taking, well we will actually be taking a look, I'll save that for a different time. They will be playing the tier 8 IGN carrier Shokaku. And I gotta say, this is one of my most played ships in World of Warships. And I haven't been playing um, carriers all that much, but this one really, I really like it. I like it more than the, than the uh, Taiho, yes. I like it more than the Taiho and more than the Hiryu and more than any of the other uh, uh, carriers I've played. Not that I've played that many of carriers, but 132 games. I seem to be doing pretty decently in it. And today, you'll, I'll give you a quick like, tour at how you can do as good as I do, or even better, because, let's face it, I'm not the best World of Warships player. There are way better players than me, and there are way better carrier players than me, but today, I'll be demonstrating this beautiful, wonderful carrier for your enjoyment. So again, random battle, standard by now um, everyone's going crazy about this uh, Bismarck hunt for the Bismarck uh, quest chain which I do I do like I do like that idea and I think we're going to do a lot more of that but for now that's not the focus of today's video today we're going to be looking at how carriers play and how they behave how they should behave how they sometimes behave even though they shouldn't and how you may possibly learn to avoid them and to uh, at least minimize the risk that you're gonna get focused down or stricken, stricken by one of them. So we have a Lexington as our opponent. Now the Lexington has two effective um, loadouts and one uh, the effective loadouts are the base loadout the uh, one fighter one bomber one torpedo bomber and two fighters two torpedo no two fighters two bombers those are the effective loadouts and yet most people and I am quite I don't like using this term but most Tomato people, that is to say, their stats are deep red, and they usually have like 44% win rate, and uh, uh, use the ineffective um, loadout, which is three bombers and one torpedo bomber. Now, while it is a very offensive loadout, and it can do very, very well, by the way, notice I am checking out where my team is going and directing my carrier with auto um, autopilot to head in that direction because you do not want to be left alone in, in a uh, isolated flank and just you know rage at your team for not supporting you and yada 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 because they're scrubs and they're noobs and they suck and I wish they died uh, no if, if you don't move your carrier it's your fault that you got i don't know a destroyer roving up your arse uh but for now a very very nice trick i like to do i like to scare the bejesus out of a of, out of a cruiser watch him pop his defensive aa or maybe not oh there we go now usually they pop a little bit sooner and then i just run away but this time he waited so long to pop his defensive AA that I figured I might as well give him a few torpedoes as a reward for not paying attention. Now, how did I actually... I didn't? Oh, interesting. Okay, anyway, uh, yes. Now, one important thing that a carrier can and should do, and unfortunately doesn't do much, is spot. Uh, the a carrier is very, very good at spawning mostly destroyers, mostly destroyers. Uh, by the way, I'm directing the number three squadron of uh, uh, fighters to head this way because I'm expecting 
I'm expecting the enemy carrier to have the ineffective loadout because I haven't seen any of his planes at all. And I'm figuring uh, he's probably trying to strike me. Uh, no, there he, actually, no, there he is. So yes, he, he does have the ineffective loadout. Usually, usually when carriers have this kind of loadout, Lexingtons anyway, uh, they go for the carrier snipe. Uh, this one, for some reason, isn't, doesn't, isn't, I don't know. Um, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna question it. And, oh, maybe he is. Maybe he's just, no, I don't know what he's doing. Oh, he's going for the Scharnhorst. Sure this there are, there are, there's an Amagi there, who's a much, much juicier target. Um, yes, but the problem with doing this, what he's doing right now, is that he, I, I can strafe his planes like this, and they will all die. They will all, fluffing, die, except one. I'll, I'll, I'll actually let that one survive. He's, he's the one I let get, I let away. Now, just pay attention to the amount of multitasking that I'm doing here, and you can figure out for yourself. Can I handle this? Ooh, didn't mean to do that. Can I handle this? Can, can I manage these this many squadrons uh, at once? Now, if you can, or if you think you can, anyway, um, you should um, take a, 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 a sorry an IGN carrier because it's much more effective, generally speaking, than a um, American carrier, but it's much, it's exponentially more difficult to control. So I actually I actually started out with the um Amer no with the IGM carriers. I did not like the uh, American style, and um, I like it. I like I I am pretty good at RTS games, and I figured I would do well with carriers, which I am doing quite well, I would say. And uh, you see this Amagi, he uh, he slowed down quite drastically. Now, even if he wouldn't have slowed down, I would have probably still have d d done that and probably still would have killed him. But he just made it so much easier. Now, most carrier players aren't as good as I am, unfortunately. It would have been made the game much more interesting if carriers, most carrier players would be as good as I am right now. Um, but most carrier players will do an auto drop. Now I will demonstrate an auto drop just because it's common, although I find it to be mostly ineffective, because you will probably get maybe two, maybe three uh, torpedo hits with an auto drop. I'm not talking about bomb drop. Bomb drop, bomb drop you can auto drop, it's gonna be fine. I just prefer doing a manual drop because that way I can guarantee uh, where the bombs hit and um, There is there is a downside because if you manual drop with bombers Even if all your bombs hit and even if every single one of them procs a fire uh, You can only get two fires because of how lit how, how small the uh, reticle is or the drop What is this guy? Doing? Now my, my, my uh, Challenge isn't very challenging in this in this particular game, but oh wait 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 did I goof? Oh, I I, I might have goofed. I might have goofed. It's it's th this is why by the way the I'm I'm saying that the uh, here we go the uh, all um, The pure strike loadout for the uh, Lexington is most ineffective because you cannot cover your team. You, uh, I, I goofed. You can't cover your team. You can't protect them in any way. All, all you can do is watch them die and try and hold off the enemy attacks by doing more damage than him. And you do have the potential to do more damage than him, but uh, oops, there we go. Okay, now this is the trick, by the way. When you're going for a carrier or a cruiser, wait till he pops his defensive AA. By the way, most, again, most carrier players will never do this. Will never do this. But 
but I'm one of the evil ones that do. And in case you run into me or an, another evil carrier player that does this, you have nothing to do about it. You either you either wait too long, like that Bugioni did, and give me and give them a chance to um, to pull off the strike, or you pull off the, uh, or you pop the defensive AA, and then they just back off because they don't have to go for you. Oh, there's the uh, Kagero. Now, again, my team isn't spawning him, my planes are. And my planes, I mean, the Kagero does not have very good AA. And I'm going to spot the torpedoes that he launched to get against that Tron horse. And I'm going to probably save that Tron horse ass because, well, now he can see them coming. He might not avoid them because reasons. Um, and I'll just drop this Kagero just to give him the fight of his life. I don't actually think... Oh, well, it might. No, 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 it did. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. The Lexington's defensive AA has, I think, um, run out by now. So I am going to drop him. Now... Oh, it's not. It hasn't. It hasn't. Pull back. Pull back. Oh, now it did. Maybe. Thing is, you can't actually know when it did or when it didn't. Oh no, it, it, it definitely didn't. Okay, never mind. I'm, I'm kind of wasting my planes here, which is quite, quite unfortunate and very uh, amateurish of me. Um, can't go for them, can't go for them. I can save this Amagi though. Now, when you engage your fighters against the enemy, you spot them. Oh, 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 the hit was broken. I thought, actually thought I messed up. Bomb it. No, the hit uh, when you do this, you engage your um, the enemy uh, squad with your fighters. It scatters them. It scatters them, and it causes them to fuck up their uh, uh, drop. I'm not. I'm not doing too well, actually, unfortunately. But uh, I mean, I am doing a decent amount of damage. But I'm not. I'm not killing off as many of the planes, the enemy planes, as I should be. And oh, I actually. Okay. I, I need. Okay. I need to do something about this Sean horse, and I need to do something about him quickly. Now, if you, for some reason, decide to pressure the enemy carrier and people do that quite a lot unless you're in something that has very very good AA or you're confident that you're gonna be able to deal with the enemy carriers uh, uh, strikes by avoiding them uh, do not put pressure on the enemy CV he will if he's any good well, do what I'm doing to this Sean horse right now. I'm just torturing him. I'm, I'm reversing. I mean, <laughs> I'm just reversing. Uh, I'm torturing him. I'm forcing it to back off. And I'm, pour I'm burning. Well, is, it, is it burning for me? He is burning for me. I'm burning him. And you're, he's not going to get close to me because I'm not going to allow it. I'm just going to keep harassing him with uh, my, uh, my strikes. And because he's this close to me, I can refresh my uh, planes very, very quickly. So here comes the second squad. Oh, yes, the uh, a catapult fighter. Uh, very good, actually. Oh, almost good. Very good for scattering planes. Uh, I'm, I'm not actually not gonna launch my uh, fighter because it's gonna take up the. Deck, the deck, the flight deck, so I, I won't be able to launch my assault planes, which is what I want to do right now. It's more important than dealing with the enemy planes, and he's dead anyway, so whatever. So let's try and beat these fighters to it. Boom. There you go. That wasn't so bad. Now, if you're in, say, in Nagato, and you have crappy, crappy AA, 
The last thing, the absolutely last thing, also I'm slow as fuck, the absolutely last thing you want to be doing is getting anywhere near a carrier. When I say anywhere near, 17 kilometers is near. Okay, usually when you when you send out strikes, they're going to be 30 kilometers or more, and he has the spotter aircraft instead of the uh, fighter as well. That's not going to do him any favors whatsoever. And he is going to take, unless I fuck this up, the torpedoes have a minimum, minimal, I, I did kind of fuck it up a bit. The uh, torpedoes have a minimal uh, arming distance before they actually become warheads. And until then, they're just floating fish. And they don't actually do any damage. So if you manual drop and you manual drop too close, it's not going to do anything. Um, I think that's squad 7. Yes, it is squad 7. You gotta make sure to manage your squad well in a American a, sorry, in a, um, IGN carrier. The Americans have it way easier. Ah, I wanted to kill still. Oh well. Um, yes, it's, it's pretty much game over. So in the meantime, while I'm sending my planes out against that Hipper, sure, why not? Hipper, uh, I'll explain a bit about how you should manage your planes. Always, I suggest, especially when you're beginning, always stack them. Now, by stacking, I mean, you see this squad? This squad is alone. It's one squad. This is squad four. This is squad five. Now, if I were to um, select them like this, if I were to manual drop, it would look like this. So as you can see, I would have a hard time hitting a single target. However, if I stack them, that is, fly them very close together, and then order them in the same direction, this is much easier. Let me just arrange the strike. You can easily drag this to arrange the strike you want to have. And I like doing, well, I fucked up, but generally I like doing manual drops. Uh, as you can see, it, it is effective to do just auto drops, especially with the um, uh, bombers. And you can just do this. I mean, it, it's not even, it was, they weren't even ready to lift off yet. And I just, I told them, when you're ready, go over there, bomb him, and they're just going to do it. I mean, I don't have to think about it. Well, if you're any good, you're going to have to think about it. But um, well, especially when you're beginning, you don't really have to think about it. And one, two, three, boom. And that's it. That really is it. I mean, there was a lot of clicking going on, and there was a lot of multitasking and paying attention to what's going on around me and paying attention to the map. And you do have to do that. But when you're beginning, it's not as bad. When you're beginning, also, Wargaming removed the um, option to do manual drops anyway, so you don't even have to worry about that. And you can only start manual dropping if you feel like it at tier six. So tier four, you can get the grips, get the controls going. If you're new to this and you're not really sure what how RTS games are, RDS games is like um, StarCraft, Red Alert, you know, games where you control multiple units at once. Um, I would definitely recommend the American carrier uh, line because they have much, much better fighters. They have bigger squadrons, so it's harder to fuck up completely. And they have... Um, oh, and never, ever, 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 ever under any circumstances go for the strike loadout. This thing. Never ever go for this thing ever okay if you go for this thing and anyone who's playing any carrier with any brain is going to slaughter you if you want to take a look take a look at the previous game at the lexington where is he there he is he is one two three four five six seven eighth on the team in a top tier Top tier uh, carrier. 
I'm top of the team. I did 116,000 damage, got 1700 XP, and him. And essentially the same carrier uh, uh, rank in tier seven, uh, tier eight, tier eight. There were only four, no, five, five tier eights in this match, and he was one of them. And look at where it got him. Sure, there weren't people who fucked up more, but that's, you know, just because there, just because someone was worse than you doesn't mean you did good, okay? So, if you want to take it easier, especially in the beginning, go for the Langley, take it easy, and, um, I actually, I, I, I didn't even research the, uh, Bogue. I mean, I, I played the Langley, I think, once, maybe. And I said, nope, this is not for me. I don't like this. I think this was actually my first carrier I unlocked. Um, I think, I think actually, yeah. And then I said, nope, not going to do that anymore. And then I quit. I quit carrier. And then I came back to it a, a, quite a few games later after I got a bit of a better grip at the game. And I started with the whole show. And this is real. The usual and the show if you take if you take a look at it um, actually we're gonna have to cut this short I hope you enjoyed this video and this instruction and I'll see you in the next video